landslide. Fleetwood Mac, Lindsey Buckingham, Stevie Nicks, a song played on guitar. My name is Stuart, famously not one of the writers of this song. I did think Smashing Pumpkins wrote this song for a long time, so I was wrong once before. Maybe it'll turn out I'm wrong again, and I'll learn that I did write this song. Let's get into it. So, Lindsey Buckingham, the guitarist for this song, plays with the capo on the third fret. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna learn without the capo. You don't have a capo. Nobody has a capo. You, you all have capos. Piles of them laying around. We're not gonna use it for this. After we learn the song without a capo, then you can go grab your capo, throw it on the third fret, and have a ball. If you ever see this song written in sheet music and it says that it starts on an E flat chord, that's because if you play a C chord with a capo on the third fret, turns into an E flat chord, but really we're playing the C chord shape to start the song off. Spe Speaking of starting the song off, let's start the song off with a C chord. Get the C chord here. Look, look at it. There are a couple different versions of the C chord. Later on, I'm going to make a video just on the C chord. I've said that before. Never going to happen. Put your ring finger on the third fret of the second string from the top. Put your middlest of fingers on the second fret of the D string, the third one from the top. Then put your pointer finger on the first fret of the second string from the bottom. Many of you know this chord. You've played it in other songs. Uh, Let It Be comes to mind as a song that uses the C chord. We've got it here for you all. I'll, let me give you a couple little tips on the C chord right now, because this chord can sometimes suck a butt, and it's just true. So look, look, we've got our fingers here, but I'd like you to notice, but this is very important. I've said this before, I'll say it again. You don't want your fingers sticking straight up. You don't want them to be perpendicular to the strings and parallel to the frets. That right there, if you try to have your fingers coming straight up, it, you're asking for a world of hurt and pain and sorrow and also sadness. You want your fingers to be at this, this angle here. It's like a 45 degree angle from the strings. Do you see that? Did you notice what my thumb did just then? When I was doing this, my thumb was down behind the neck of the guitar. When I got up at this angle, my thumb popped up over the top. Some like method books and some like some other places where they tell you about guitar technique, they might say that your thumb should not come up over the top. They might say that your thumb should stay behind the neck. For some classical styles, that's very true. For some chords, like a bar chord, that's also true. You wanna keep your thumb behind the neck of the guitar. When we're playing these, these cowboy chords, these open string chords, mm -hmm. Go ahead and have your thumb coming up over the top. It's great. It's comfortable. It's a little hook for your hand. It just hangs out there. It's great. Thumb up over the top. Thumbs up from Stuart. Also, your thumb coming up over the top helps position your hand in a way where it's easier to get that angle with your fingers. There's, a, there's so many little details with the C. We'll get to some more of those later. But now it's time to get the right hand going on. We have a seven note picking pattern we need to learn. It's a variation of Travis picking. We've done that before in Dust in the Wind by Kansas, but now we're doing it in this song, Landslide by Fleetwood Mac, possibly by Stuart Lehman Brown. We'll see the future only knows who wrote this song. Also the past, let's learn the picking pattern. So take the pad of your right thumb and rest it right on the A string, the second string from the top, just like that. Notice I'm not using the tip of my thumb. I'm using this whole section right here. I'm just resting that whole thing right there. Then I'm just gonna go like this and play that note. Oh, let's get the C chord back over here. Okay, C chord over here. I'm just gonna, with my thumb, I'm just going boom, boom. Moving my whole thumb, not going like this. I'm not squeezing like that, like I'm pushing down on a thing that sets off a bomb in an action movie. I've got my thumb like that, and my whole thumb is moving around like that. Look at that, beautiful. Beautiful. Let's, you know what? I know this is simple, but let's practice that a little bit. Let's go boom, hey, boom, hey, boom, hey, boom, hey. Thumb, what? Thumb, go, thumb, now, thumb, stop. Great. Okay, uh, let me tell you, 
what I like to do and what Lindsey Buckingham apparently likes to do, because I always see him doing this. You take this part of your hand, but like, we're going to call that the base of your palm? Is that a thing? Base of your palm, right here, the, this part. Should I keep rubbing it? I'm just going to rub it a little bit longer so you can see what part of my hand I'm talking about. I'm going to take that part of my hand, I'm going to rest it right right here just like right at the corner not quite on top of the e-string but just right behind the e-string and a little above it i'm gonna rest that part of my hand right there you see that look let's see if i can get an angle of it see that oh yeah you can see that i'm resting my hand right there how distracting is this stupid light in the body of my guitar it's just always there Ooh, maybe i'll get it lined up with the hole. Oh, can I hold it there? Oh, I can't, it's so hard to do. Okay, there we go. I'm just gonna keep it there for a minute. That looks good. All right, so I've got my hand lined up right there. Gotta not move. No, there we go. All right, we've got that. Now we've got the everything positioned with your hand anchored against the guitar right there. Anchored right on that part of the bridge. I'm putting way too much energy keeping this light around the sound hole. Okay, there we go. Here we go, let's practice it again. One, two, here we go. And boom, hey, boom, whoa, boom, ouch, boom, good, boom, hey, boom, bang. All right, I'm gonna ignore the light for the rest of the video. Time to learn some more notes to this song. We've got that thumb going on with the A string. Now we gotta get some fingers involved. I would like you to please, with the tip of your pointer finger, wrap around the bottom of the G string. So see how I've got my pointer finger, I can just grab it, I can sort of pinch those two strings between my thumb and pointer finger. Then keeping my hand anchored against the guitar, I'm gonna go like this. Thumb, finger, thumb, finger. So I've got my thumb is moving like this, side to side. My finger, my pointer finger, I'm squeezing it like this. The way I imagine the squeezing a trigger would be, although I don't actually know if that's true at all. Let's do it a little slower. You and I together for old time's sake. One, two, here we go. And thumb, finger, thumb. Great song. Keep the C chord over here. Don't move it. Don't move it. Your fingers hurt. Great. I'm glad they hurt. It makes me happy when I hear that your fingers hurt. Now, we're going to add a second thumb note right after you go thumb finger. Then your thumb is going to play the D string. It's just going to move on down one string and play that note. So now we've got thumb, finger, thumb. Hey, thumb, finger, thumb. Ho, he, ha. One, two, here we go. And thumb, finger, thumb. Thumb, finger, thumb. Thumb, finger, thumb. Thumb, finger, thumb. Two more times. Thumb, finger, thumb. A thumb, finger, thumb. We're just gonna add another note. We're just gonna kinda add one note at a time until we finally get up to the whole seven note pattern. And then we're gonna add some other chords. Thumb, finger, thumb. Then your middle finger. Now, some people finger pick just using thumb and pointer finger. Lindsey Buckingham uses his middle finger. I'm, look, if we're being honest, he sometimes uses his ring finger. And I sometimes use my ring finger as well. Do, it, I, do, the, do I do it on this song? Let's see. I do not. We're just going to use these three. All right. I'm talking, I'm talking a lot here. Let's get some more playing going on. We've got thumb, finger, thumb, then middle finger is going to play the second to bottom string, also known as the B string, should sound like this. So now we've got thumb, finger, thumb, finger. One, two, here we go. And thumb, pointer, thumb, middle. Thumb, pointer, thumb, middle. Thumb, pointer, thumb, middle. Thumb, pointer, thumb, middle. How'd you do? Slow it down a little bit. Some of you are like, yeah, that'd be great if we slow it down. Some of you are like, are you, are you kidding me? You're going to slow it down more than that? I am. Here we go. One, two, very slowly. Thumb, pointer, thumb, 
middle, thumb, pointer, thumb, middle, two more, thumb, pointer, thumb, middle, thumb, pointer, thumb, middle. Are you keeping the C chord over here? I hope so. Are you keeping this part of your hand anchored to the guitar right here? Keeping your hand stable? I hope so. Are you keeping your thumb pretty straight and using the whole pad of your thumb to play the A string and the D string? I hope so. I hope you're not going like this. That doesn't sound as good and it's not as comfortable and it's weird. It looks weird. Uh, I had something important to say. It was about the C chord. Does your chord sound like this? Does it sound like this? If it sounds like that, just go with it for now. It means that some of your finger stuff over here is not ideal, but that's okay. Just get used to it. The most important thing for right now, as we're learning the song, is just to keep the rhythm of your right hand on point. That is the first time I've ever used the expression on point in my entire life. If, if a note doesn't sound right, if you're, you're going, and you're mad at that one note and you just keep going. And you, and you just keep getting mad at that one string and you keep trying to fix it. it. You've got a long road ahead of you of just being mad at that note. Just if you have some muted strings, if you, you hear some wrong notes come in there, just try to let it happen. Just let the little clunky muted note happen. Keep learning the finger picking pattern. As time goes on and you keep playing it, your fingers will adjust, especially if I ever make that video just about the C chord. Let's learn another note of the finger picking pattern. We've got thumb, pointer, thumb, middle. Then we're gonna go back to thumb on the A string. So now we've got thumb, pointer, thumb, middle, thumb. How do you feel about that? And bing, bang, bong, bang. One more time, thumb, pointer, thumb, middle, thumb. Am I gonna go through the checklist again? I am. Keep this part of your hand anchored right here. Keep the C chord over here with your thumb up here. Keep your thumb straight as you pluck the notes. Keep your fingers very, very curved and do that little trigger motion while you play. Most importantly, play the same exact rhythm I am playing. You are not allowed to go like this. Or whatever, I, those weren't even the right notes, but you get the point. Don't do whatever rhythm you feel like. Don't just have your fingers go as fast as they can. Play this slow, steady rhythm along with me. It is perhaps the most crucial thing about this song. Let's add another note. Thumb, finger, thumb, finger, thumb, then, that's right, another finger. How did you know your pointer finger is going to play the G string, third string from the bottom, like that. We're stacking up a lot of notes here, but just, just follow my lead, play it along with me. One, two, here we go. And boom, bang, boom, bang, boom, bang. That was thumb, pointer, thumb, middle, thumb, pointer, point you're thinking I thought we were gonna learn landslide this really does not sound like landslide we're taking it slow we're, we're playing the song very slowly we're taking our time making sure that we're using the right fingers we're learning it bit by bit we're taking a little breaks in between adding each note which is driving you absolutely crazy but you got to give yourself those little breaks so your hands can process what's going on and then when we're ready, like now, we're gonna add another note. The final note in the picking pattern is after all of those notes, your thumb is going to play the D string, the third string from the top. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Thumb, finger, thumb, finger, thumb, finger, thumb. Hey, thumb. Pointer, thumb, middle, thumb, pointer, 
thumb, thumb, pointer, thumb, middle, thumb, pointer, thumb. All right. Any questions? Great. We are going to play this all the way through four times. Then we're going to speed it up. Then we're going to learn a couple other chords for the song. Let's do it. One, two, nice and slowly thumb finger thumb middle thumb pointer thumb two keep it slow one more time all right we're gonna speed it up we're gonna speed it up how fast do we want how about like that's good right there. Tap that rhythm with me. Would you go? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ready to play it? Get your fingers and your thumb ready to go. One and two, and here we go. And again. Yes. One more time. All right, we're doing it. We've got the rhythm. It's starting to sound the littlest bit like landslide now, right? All right, we do want to do it faster, but before we play it faster, we are going to learn the other two chords in the verse of this song. We just did a C. The next chord is a chord called the G over B. Basically what it is, is it's a G chord, but we're only gonna use the middle four strings of the guitar. Here's how we're gonna do this. We've got the C chord. I would like you to take your pinky, put it on the third fret of the second to bottom string. Is that a thing that you can do for me? Yes? Good. Pinky's right there. Take your ring finger. Get rid of it. Take your middle finger, move it up to the second fret of the second string from the top. Your pointer finger, it can stay there if it wants, or it can come off the string. It doesn't matter because the pinky is in charge of that B string now. So your pointer finger, should it stay or should it go? The Clash. It's a Weird Al parody. It's about fingers. Where was I? Oh, we had the C chord. You added your pinky to the third fret of the second to bottom string. You got rid of your ring finger. You put your middle finger on the second fret of the A string. Second string from the top. Pointer finger can do whatever it wants. Would you, for me, as a personal favor, play that picking pattern we were playing before on the C, but do it on this weird G contraption. Check it out. Oh, that's beautiful. One, two, here we go. chord one more chord then we're putting it all together we're gonna play an a minor seven chord here's how we're gonna do that you're gonna take your pinky get rid of it get rid of your pinky take your middle finger move it one string down so it's on the D string on the second fret for those of you familiar with the a minor chord the a minor seven is just the a minor chord without the ring finger Let's play the pattern on the A minor seven chord. One, two, three, four. Oh, look at that. Three chords, one picking pattern. We are really doing it here. Watch this. C. G over B. A minor seven. Then right back to the G over B. That was C. Then G over B. Then A minor seven. Then G over B. Then it starts over. Let's play this all together very slowly as a team. When I say slowly, you know I mean slowly. Let's do it. 
We're gonna do it like this speed. I know, I know, it's slow. I know, but here's the thing. We have to switch to these weird chords. So you need some extra time to process it all and think about it, focus on the rhythm. We got so many things going on. You have to keep your thumb up over the top, you have to keep this thumb flat, you have to keep your hand anchored here, you have to switch fingers. You just push it so that's why we're doing it so slowly. If you try to play it faster than this, you're never going to learn it and your whole life is going to fall apart. One and two and one, two, here we go. Then the G over B. Did you make it? No? Didn't think so. Then A minor seven. Back to the G over B. Back to the C chord. Oh. Switch and boom. Hey. Here, I'm going to tell you right now, flat out, we're not going to learn any more notes to this song. Yes, there is a chorus to the song. We're not going to learn it right now. You have to learn this. You have to learn to run before you can fly or, or uh, whatever the thing is. Um, so that's why we're just going to stick with this. And then later on, maybe I'll make another video about the next part of the song. Here's what I would like to do. I would like to discuss speeding up. And I would like to discuss how exactly to switch from chord to chord. So far, all I've done is I've told you switch chords, switch chords. Watch this. We have this one little pause in between each finger picking pattern. We have the seven notes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, then a pause, and then the next chord. So that little pause is where we're going to switch chords. So check this out. I'm going C. Lift, push down. Ooh, I did something weird with the finger picking. Sometimes when I'm trying to talk and play at the same time, it just it just does not go well. But the point I was making was that you're going to lift your fingers up during that little pause after each time through the picking pattern. Then you're gonna push your fingers down on the new chord right as you start the new pattern. Let me show you that one more time. This time, I won't screw it up. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Lift down. Lift down. Lift new chord. See how that works? Again, C. Then lift G over B. So I'm still basically just telling you, and then switch chords. I'm not giving you a ton of advice here, but the moral of this story is you lift your fingers up at one time, and then you put the new chord down all at once. Here's what you could practice. You ready? You ready? You could practice, uh, what was I going to say? You could practice just switching from a chord to the same chord. What do I mean by that? Let's say you're really struggling with this G over B chord. Then instead of trying to switch from the G, uh, instead of trying to switch from the C to the G over B, C to G over B, just go G over B, lift. G over B, lift. G over B, lift. You could do it just like that. You don't even need to do the picking pattern. You can just go push, lift, push, lift, push, lift, push, lift. Do that. 20 times, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not your mom. You can practice as many times as you want. Or you can do the picking pattern and everything and just stay on that one chord. Watch this. Lift. 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 Do that for a while on each chord. Just get really used to just that feeling of pushing down on all the notes at the same time. Then when you're ready, when you're feeling good about that, then you can start piecing the chords together. C. Lift G over B. C. Lift A minor seven. And boom. It's really helpful. I know it's helpful when I go, huh, huh, huh. 
That's all you need. That's the secret to playing any song on guitar is listening to me go, there, you know the song. Speeding it up. The oldest saying in the book, you want to play it fast, learn to play it slow or something like that. It's The thing is, it's just true. It's just true. You, you must be disciplined and you must be restrained and play it slowly and then speed it up. Let's use my patented double time halftime trick. Here's what it is. We're just gonna do it on the C chord for a minute. We're not gonna worry about switching chords. We're gonna play it very slowly, two times. Then we're gonna play it double speed, two times. I don't know why this works so well. It just works for learning songs quickly. Watch this. I'm gonna do it once for you, then we'll do it together as a team. So we're gonna go really slow. Then again. Then twice as fast. Back to slow. See how that works? So twice, very slow. Twice, two times faster. Let's do it. One and two. And stay on the C chord. Slowly play all seven notes. Do it again. Get ready, play it twice as fast. Back to slow. Twice as fast. I messed up, sorry. Then slow. Here we go. And look, you're off to the races. Running start. Dancing through life. Wicked. Stephen Sondheim. No. Wait. Who wrote that song? Not Stephen Sondheim. Stephen Schwartz, who's Stephen Schwartz? Composer of Wicked, the musical. I guess that's it. Mm -hmm. 